Good morning or afternoon or evening depending on where you are. We've got a lot of news today and before I get into the news specifically we need to speak of a few things as a disclaimer if you will because there's been some events going on in the last weekend that are not only disturbing it's it's showing who really runs this earth because I realize most of my listeners are very aware but it's obvious that our brothers and sisters out there really aren't getting it because they're arguing about the same sense of diversion so the lodges and cabals that amass power are void of spiritual knowledge in the way we think of it but they are highly equipped with all matters of sorcery this is what I'm going to be speaking of today in many ways technomancy it's our new word for the day so people will not see balance until they reactivate their ancestral powers based on facts experience geometry math which is math and a very real imagination rooted in truth it is intention and manifestation that gives a culture the ability to have an ancestral home astral and ancestral to go to where they leave physical planes rather than returning to one that has been designed without our growth in mind it doesn't matter what the program society chooses to do it is about what frequency you are on and how much you are progressing on your own very personal path what we are doing is providing as much knowledge as possible based on experience as to what is best and what is the best things to focus on with all things considered so as a master you must avoid getting trapped in others fruitless ridiculous realities even if that reality appears to be as big as the world everything in such worlds are magic except to the magician there was a reason that a whole group on planet earth was traumatized by a television show on Sunday Sunday is special there is a reason why so many religions focus on Saturday or Sunday it depends on whether you're following the moon or the sun but we won't fight about that much it doesn't matter really there is a reason you were traumatized by the walking dead specifically as I've been talking to you about who killed your favorite characters in the most horrific way it was to traumatize you and that still works because parts of your brain does not know if something is real or fantasy especially because of the world as it is now because when the illusion fades what remains will be the truth if we feed ourselves fake food fake friends false knowledge incorrect concepts 
we can indeed become unreal. False. Some say the world is an illusion, but truly anyone who thinks the world is not real means they are not real. You can only experience existence from within. It's personal. And as we will go on in the next several weeks, everything about you is not just one thing. You are not male or female. You are not human or not human. You are not vegetable or mineral. You are a mosaic. You are everything. And if you choose to be just one thing that someone's told you you are, you will fail. If this is a game, you better win. And you better find your own way. We all help each other on this path, whether someone likes you or doesn't like you, agrees with you, does not agree with you. They are helping. They are put in your path to help you. Sometimes things that make you angry the most because that's the thing in you that you don't want. People that you argue with are your teachers. You need to listen to this because there are some things going on right now that I I wouldn't have believed even possible 20 years ago. So once your perspective changes, so does the realm around you. Mastery. True mastery means grasping the truth of all things and in this way, if the cosmos or the cosmic wind blows you you will remain standing like a tree which is why in the oldest religions we have found that what they worshipped was first a tree before she was a woman before she was God's wife before she was you know either a slut or a mother you know, the way the religions have changed, there is something else. It means that you should stand. As you continue to negotiate the oceans of experience here, it is a fractal beauty. It is what you are, a mosaic of things. And we will go into it. This is not myth. This is fact. Where you can spend an in Infitude, and never experience the exact same frequency twice. You are not what you were 10 minutes ago. Nor will you be 10 minutes from now. We are constantly changing. We are constantly switching. Growing. There is a war going on right now. I was wrong when I said last week that it would be after the elections. They didn't wait for this. Because Martin County's Sheriff's Department have continued to lie about the incidents that occurred on this weekend and they're putting out false flags. I have um, an image of it on my Facebook page. This is the Trace Elements Radio Group. Join if you like. I will keep you informed of this because we need to watch this. We need to watch this. Because nonviolent, peaceful human beings of all ages all around this earth right now are standing up Because we would like clean water. We would like the fake to end. The fake foods. The the horrific things going on to our planet right now. So ask yourself, why the Sheriff's Department released pictures 
in one of the pro DPL blogs but they didn't release it on their own Facebook page photos taken by Martin County Sheriff's Office that are just supposed to show a protester shooting an arrow with what appears to be a stick which is surprisingly not a bow <laughs> same individual with some sort of tube thing sporting a sheriff county's hat while they posted it so you know stupid yeah we have a pipeline in Pennsylvania that burst leaks 55 gallons of gas into a major river it's owned by the same company behind the Dakota Access this is endangering the water of 6 million people right now so managed by Sinoco Demon, by the way. I'll tell you the the origins of Sinoco one day. We'll do a whole thing on it. Let's hold that for now. It's a bad word, put it that way. Logistics well it burst Thursday last week after a heavy rainfall in Pennsylvania. The spill dumped gallons of gasoline into Wallace Run. It's a tributary of um, the Loyal Sock Creek that drains into um, Sescana River. The breach was detected at 3 in the morning when the pressure of the pipeline dropped suddenly. Sunoco eventually shut down the pipeline but uh, uh, way after it had already spilled spilled you know this Saskana had previously been declared the third most endangered river in the US it has come under threat due to development of natural gas industry, particularly the practice of hydraulic fracking, fractioning, I think it was called, but you know, it's fracking. Fracking has called major problems worldwide due to the so-called Cheney's loophole that basically exempts natural gas companies from vast majority of US environmental regulations there's something like this in every country in the world right now a loophole to get out of prosecution many other rivers are endangered worldwide because of this practice so American Rivers has said fracking poses one of the greatest risks to the rivers or that any river has faced in decades. We are taking a major gamble on clean drinking water for millions. So we are seeing the same problem happen over and over and over again. And it's not being stopped at all. And sadly what we are seeing is history repeating itself. Our native peoples long ago and our people today right now have always been peaceful loving people have cared for the less fortunate have the love of our lands and our great chiefs of long ago we have helped cared helped others survive the harsh lands the harsh temperatures here but today we are standing tall with 
the love that we have for the lands of the Earth Mother. We have a love of everything the Creator has given us. We're fighting to protect what little is left on Mother Earth. The abuse of Mother Earth must stop. As all people from all around our Mother Earth are coming to help standing for life the blood of Mother Earth we're standing together in peace and prayer we want justice but it's not for just us protecting the water that serves all the people of this earth do you think it's an accident that your body contains so much water? And if you go below a certain percentage of water, you die. Because water is life. And water is sacred. And as they continue poisoning this beautiful land of ours, which they are continuing to doing, and please people, Stop sending me messages from the Galactic Federation. <laughs> I try my best to be good spirited on this, but I'm not feeling well and I'm a little short tempered and they are not helping us. Hashtag not at all. Not at all. We are experiencing a cycle right now that we know nothing about and the people who say they know something about it don't there is no book written about this other than the bad time is returning like the Maya said you think the Maya are gone the Maya aren't gone what do you think Miami stands for this is the Maya the Creek Indians are the Maya, by the way. Half of their language is Mayan. Not from the northern tribes, but from the southern tribes, Yucatan tribes. That say the exact same thing. The eagle and the condor, which I've been asked about, well, it's the Creek tribe. It would it would take it would take the government of America allowing for digs in um, Georgia, which have proven actually about ten years ago that that's who they are because there are there are tablets with writing on it and temples with the exact same circular patterns going to the top. That are Mayan that said that an asteroid hit that we were warned because there was a series of sinkholes that happened that's why the Mayans had to go out of their big cities and that it would come again the return the eagle and the condor they never actually split up we moved people move and there are disasters happening on every single planet in the solar system disasters well kind of big big changes give give me that now something has changed Saturn's mysterious hexagons has changed from blue to gold no one knows why absolutely they can't guess so it's like nothing we've seen on any other planet in the entire universe ever and now the mysterious structure on Saturn's North Pole just got weirder in just four years Saturn's hexagons has changed its color from blue to gold now at first I would say this just means there's some weird off-gassing but so far, our best guess as to why this change occurred is that this 
is what it looks like when Saturn's North Pole gears up for the next summer solstice. And we need to write this down. If they are telling us it's for the next summer solstice, that means next summer solstice is going to be a game changer. Now this was discovered 30 years ago. Saturn's hexagon, six-faced, six-sided structure that spans roughly 20,000 miles, so 32,000 kilometers in diameter, extends about 100 kilometers, about 60 miles, down into the planet's dense atmosphere. As observed by NASA's Voyager and Cassini spacecraft, each point of the hexagon appears to rotate at its center at nearly the same rate that Saturn rotates on its axis. Along the rim of this hexagon, a jet stream of air is blasting eastward at speeds of around 200 miles an hour, so 321 kilometers per hour. So based on its size and its movement, scientists have thought that it's a vast cloud generated by a gigantic perpetual hurricane spinning at the center of the planet's North Pole. This storm has been raging, raging for centuries. But that's a guess. We don't know. 100%. So while we're they're pretty confident that they know what the hexagon is. They don't know how it got there. And once you start a giant whirlpool of air, it's relatively easy to keep it spinning, I guess. But the force you need to get it wound up in the first place is really hard to explain. And it happened a long time ago, and we got nothing. No idea. Scientists have banded, you know, about a bunch of explanations for this hexagon. Water swirling inside a bucket can generate whirlpools possessing holes with geometric shapes. Myself, I think there's certain sound there. We know sand will give us a certain look. But I'm thinking, there's of course no giant bucket on Saturn to make this gigantic, this gigantic hexagon. So it's probably not that, but it's something, right? We also don't know how long the seasons are. With a year that lasts 29 Earth years, Saturn changes seasons only once every seven years-ish. Increased in sunlight over the past three years maybe made the golden hue. I don't know. But NASA, <laughs> who, you know, makes me laugh, says the color change is most likely seasonal, so they're regurgitating everyone else's ideas. So in particular, the change from bluish color to gold may be due to the increased production of some sort of photochemical haze. So like I said, it's a freaking chemical. So you're telling me that the best you got is what I just made up. <laughs> Thank you, NASA. So anyway, the atmosphere in the North Pole is going to hit their summer solstice in May 2017. We don't know. But it's changed. As every planet in this solar system is changing, we're getting the gentle thing. A gentle touch. This could be a lot worse, guys, than what's going on right now. 
we have that. And then we have NASA's Juno spacecraft. Unexpectedly entered a safe mode Tuesday night. 13 hours before the last flyby of Jupiter. So the spacecraft has been in orbit around the gas giant since around July 4th. And because of its elliptical orbit, it only gets close enough to take a detailed scientific measurement around 53 days. But as far as I can tell, from everyone but NASA, it's not taken a close image in years. Years. It doesn't surprise me that much, really, because our satellites our probes, our great big drones that we're spending a lot of money on to look at other planets are not up being allowed to get close. And I don't think it's NASA or the secret space program. I think the planets themselves are not allowing our stuff to go near them. And I realize there's so many people who are on the alternative media circuit who said that I served on Mars 20 years 30 years, 40 years I went through some jump room to Mars except they all look kind of wimpy and it makes me think back to do you remember Rick James when some little girl forgot her name Mars I can just see Mars say no no I am Mars and you know bad word starts with a B it's not happening they don't want us who would look what we've done to here we're treating our planet like a toilet would anything else want us there no and then going back to North Dakota how far will this go because the illogical conclusion is pretty terrible to think about because a line of trucks and commercial vehicles on North Dakota's Highway 6 Saturday was a speeding train. One vehicle after another, traveling too fast and too close. Still, on track, the entire train turned left, began racing down a rural dirt road. It was clear why. This is the Dakota access pipeline. It's being constructed. Your president told them to stop and they didn't. He is not in charge. Whoever you elect will not be in charge. And if you still think that, I can't help you. So fresh dirt marks. Where the pipeline has been and where it's supposed to go construction is on a speedy timetable. They have not stopped. They will not stop. And as the company has testified in court, it wants the 1,170 mile 3.8 billion project up and running by January 1st 2017. They have not stopped. They have not changed that projection. So, Standing Rock Sioux Tribe and several others camped by are determined to stop this to protect the waters of the Missouri River which spreads into everything on this continent ultimately to help this continent begin the most important conversation of this era but energy and climate and survival because from Paris to Standing Rock it's about what we are doing to the planet and what will happen next
So the machinery of the state of North Dakota has been engaged to stay on schedule. And to be clear, North Dakota is acting as a trustee for the company, using what it considers the power of state to make this project so. How far will they go? Look at where it's been. The state has been the ally instead of a referee, helping to craft a regulatory approach that avoided regulation. This is the crazy notion that the company did everything it was supposed to do, so leave them alone. Yeah. Because the plan was to avoid pesky regulation right from the beginning. It's much more efficient to be governed by official winks instead of anything about environmental impact or even a statement thereof. And even now the Dakota Access Pipeline figures the state with its allies will give in and sign the final paperwork. As the energy transfer partners attorney told the entire court, the status quo is that we're in the middle of building a pipeline. So according to Oil and Gas 360, the next step is for the EDP to require easements to drill the pipeline under a lake. Lake Owehi, I think it's called. So in the most probable scenario, the corpse, interesting term, means dead body. It's again about their spells and their necromancy. It will grant permits while the district court litigation will continue. The ETP would likely get notice on easement status by the end of October. It'll take 60 days to drill under the lake with a full crew and no major disruptions. No worries. The state's machinery is supposed to make it, so how far will they go? They've tried intimidation, humiliation. The number of arrests is increasing. The Native women being taken are strip-searched, humiliated. They want to rile up the men. How do you do that? You touch the women. And that's what they're doing. So they pick on the protesters. They pick on the elders, the journalists, famous people. Anyone who would make the state appear potent. The latest tactic is to toss around the word riot. As if saying it is enough. to change its very definition. Authorities arrest 63 protesters during the Saturday riot. Sheriff Kyle Kutchmeyer posted on Facebook a riot to say a situation clearly illustrates that we have what we've been saying for weeks, that this is not peaceful, this is not lawful, it's obvious to our officers who responded that the protesters were engaged in escalating unlawful tactics behavior during this event. The protest was in initially or intentionally coordinated and planned by agitators. It's agitators. It's bad guys. Scary brown-skinned people. So what's extraordinary about that statement? is the sheriff's own pictures show a peaceful protest. As Mel Brooks once wrote in Young Frankenstein, a riot is an ugly thing. This was not an ugly thing. The key phrase in the sheriff's words is fuel for the state's machinery. The words, quote, unlawful, 
that is an important phrase because the state would like to, a protest that looks like the status quo continue building this pipeline. Continue, they have not stopped. The idea of civil disobedience is that there are unjust laws, or in this case, rigged laws, and that there are people willing to go to jail to highlight that injustice. The state lost its moral claim when it moved the pipeline route away from its own capital city to near the Standing Rock Nation. Again, the question is, how far will North Dakota go? We are at war. It has started all around the world, of course. But we are at war now. Now, we could say this is World War III. Myself, I don't think World War II ever stopped or even slowed down. Again, the question is, how far will it go? Hundreds, thousands, tens of thousands arrested. And then what? The illogical conclusion to that question is too terrible to think about today. Well, yesterday. A call went out from the camps for more people. People who, as Dallas um, Goldtooth of the Indigenous Environment Network said, are willing to get arrested. People will interrupt their lives, so this pipeline will go no further. It's a call to a higher law than one that's been coded or codified. So again, it's a spell by North Dakota. And for every water protester arrested, there will always be someone else ready to be next. Now, Goldtooth reported Sunday on Facebook that a new camp is going up. The first TP is already up, directed on the proposed path of the pipeline. We are directly between the pipeline and the water, they said. That will press the issue. How far will North Dakota go? The military-style law enforcement base at Fort Rice sends its message, whatever it takes, status quo must have its pipeline. That's frightening. Except there is an antidote to those fears. It's found amongst the people at Standing Rock camps who continue to use their prayer prayers as the new status quo. This is how the United States really reacts. Really reacts. It's time we look at this. Because it's happening worldwide. If that's not enough. There is an inmate in Canada. Who's been in solitary confinement for four years. This Thunder Bay case comes to light as Ontario Human Rights Commission. Releases its provincial data on overuse of segregation in Canada especially to the natives because it, they know what it does to them. They do. It's everything that's wrong with our countries. Everything. It's sickening what's going on here. What's going on all over this planet to the native peoples that they are attacking and it is targeted. They hate natives more than black people and I didn't even think that was possible. Now no, in the upper realms of people who actually have power on this planet, like real power, I'm not talking about presidents or prime ministers 
or even kings and queens. I'm talking about real power. Color does not matter. They don't care what color someone is. They just want somebody else with money. They stay in little groups. They protect each other. They absolutely know you from them. The whole color thing, it's, it's because people are very easily riled up. I think we get that. Easily triggered. Now, Adam Caffrey has been in solitary confinement since June 6, 2012. He has never had a trial. You need to learn his name. He's a living symbol of everything that is wrong with prisons, with the justice system, with its treatment of indigenous people. There absolutely is a difference between how people of color are treated. Because we are minions to them. They don't care about us. They want us constantly fighting. And the more native people they can kill, the more power they have over the land because people don't understand their connection to the land. You can hear them talk about it. They want to be alien. They want to talk about how they're from another cosmos. Your little butt is from here, people. But it's, it's the same thing when you don't believe this is real. It's a matrix. It's You're not real. You believe you're not from here, then you are not responsible for this planet. You are responsible. Now, Mr. Capri, who is 23 now, now, has been in solitary confinement in Ontario's provincial prison for four years, housed alone in a basement at the end of a long corridor in a cell wrapped in plexiglass. The lights are on 24 hours a day. He doesn't know if it's day or night. So they've had him since he was 19. When Renault Manning Chief Commissioner of the Ontario Human Rights Commission visited him last month. She was prepared to have memory and speech problems brought on by prison officials, but the fact that this is going on and hasn't been stopped, we don't know how many people are being kept like this. The only thing the Ontario prison officials haven't done to this poor young man is shackle him upside down on the torture wall. But they may as well have. He is being tortured by the state. The sensory deprivation caused by constant light is an acknowledged torture technique. The United Nations says that holding a person for more than 15 days in solitary itself is torture. This is the most disgusting thing I've ever even heard of. I won't read it all. I do have um, the article up. But this is what's happening. So, you know, if you're one of the people who think, you know, it's not that bad. It's that bad. We had a mass arrest by RCMP on another anti-fracking blockade. A mass arrest over a hundred people because they too want clean water now one of the members of the International Indigenous Youth Council which you were supposed to have if your government was legitimate there would have been no Senate if it was done the native way you would have had a youth council an elder council a women's council a men's council there would have been none of this Senate BS that's from Rome. And Rome, by the way, collapsed, people. Now, yesterday, 
there was an action that their council decided to attend and some of them got arrested as well. As well, one of their members got hit and arrested, hit with a baton, and then they maced her in the face, a little girl. She's in the hospital now until further notice. That kind of thing is so wrong. I can't even imagine. These are children. Police are supposed to protect us as well. That's supposed to be their job, unless that never was their job. They're hurting our youth. This is the planet. You know, the filmmakers that decided they would get in the way well basically they taped oil pipeline protests that we're talking about they face felony charges that first amendment advocates say are part of the growing number of attacks on the freedom of the press worldwide so two filmmakers are facing decades in prison for recording U.S. oil pipeline protests. Seriously, serious felony charges that First Amendment advocates say are part of this growing number of attacks. You're already in a war, people. If this can happen, it can happen to anyone. all of us police are using pepper spray they arrested 83 people who were praying they were praying they are praying actually for safety and protection and you know clean water and that the pipeline will stop it won't stop It won't. The police are dressed like a freaking Darth Vader. But what they're doing is attacking kids and elders and people dancing. Military tanks are going to the camp. They are having more things on the ground here. It's like it's Iraq. You know, I talked about Chirac, Chicago, what's going on in Chicago before. This is what's going on in the Native communities. And this is not one isolated incident. The Mohawk Nation is now threatening. I'll use the word threatening, but when the Mohawk Nation says they're going to do something, they're going to do it. To do everything legally in its power to block the Energy East Pipeline Project. They said it's a threat to their way of life. It's a threat to our way of life. If you would like to continue living on planet Earth. Because, by the way, if some alien wanted you, you'd have been born there, not here. Now, despite the perceptions of the opposition... Despite the people who are being paid to say this is a good thing, in Quebec, a Mohawk-driven Canadian First Nations movement against the project is picking up steam, as in other parts of this country. Now, besides the official opposition of the Assembly of First Nations Quebec and Labrador, representing 43 Quebec chiefs, the list against the Trans-Canada Pipeline now includes the Union of British Columbia Indian Chiefs who are fighting their own pipeline battle and the Iroquois Caucus to regrouping of Mohawk Nations in Quebec and Ontario. We were fighting and we've decided to stop fighting and see if we could save at least this country a couple provinces. Now the level of anger in the First Nations 
and their complaint at having been not been consulted is revealed bluntly by a six-page personal nation-to-nation -nation letter from the Mohawk um, Kanawas okay, Grand Chief Serge Lotso Simon to the Quebec Com Premier dated on March 9th. This letter obtained this weekend by the Montreal Gazelle. The opening front for Trans-Canada and politicians to deal with, the letter unabashedly tanks the project to move 1.1 billion barrels of crude per day from Alberta to refineries in eastern Canada is dangerous and risky. One spill that's all it would take. It's a threat to our land, our water, our survival. Indeed, the allegiance of indigenous nations from coast to coast is being formed against all pipelines and rail and tanker projects that would make possible the continued expansion of tar sands. One thing for sure, the Mohawks will not be brushed aside. And they wish to press upon everyone that they reserve the right to take legal action, if necessary, to prevent the abuse of our inherent rights, our land, our choice. Simon doesn't mention it in his letter, but a year ago, he told the Journal de uh, Montreal that the barricades against a pipeline were not excluded even though the preferred option remains in dialogue, there's no immediate reaction to the Premier's office, of course. They said dialogue is important, but they didn't like the tone, the letter. That was leaked. I don't know. Do we have to beg you to stop killing everything? Do we have to beg? and be polite about this thing that's going on on our planet Earth? Myself, I don't think we need to be polite about that. We've been polite. I'm a little sick of it. Okay, take a little break. Okay, I'm back. Sorry guys, it takes me a little longer. Now, people are being bullied, guilted, pressured, controlled, intimidated, terrorized, and browbeaten into voting. But in an oligarchy, voting is a tool to manufacture the illusion of your consent. If we've learned anything so far from 2016, is that people do not understand their government. Perception is... Some of us think we have a democracy and that in this democracy, we the people have vested power in our government, which we exercise through an act of voting. Throw the... What? Bastards out has long been the war cry of the impotent Democrat, yet we no longer have a democracy to cling to. And it's although most people have chosen to ignore this fact, this is a fact of life that has been visible for decades. An oligarchy in government is a form of rule in which a small group of very wealthy individuals have control over the critical machinations of state power, industry, and economy. These people are unelected, unaccountable, and they exercise control on behalf of their financial interests drawing on 
productive power of a nation to support their lifestyles and the geopolitical ambitions. United States right now is fighting four wars if we don't include the one it's fighting on its own land. How do you ignore that? How do you not see it? Did you want to fight these wars? I didn't. I wasn't asked. They won't ask us. They won't ever ask us. A ruling class, which may actually be completely computer controlled right now, like Facebook is. This is admitted. This is not fantasy anymore. Former U.S. President Jimmy Carter has recently made the comments to this effect, telling Oprah and her audience that it's now just an oligarchy. These are two warnings of decades of comments and public admissions by former presidents key political figures warning us that not only our country, but this planet has been taken over by financial interest groups and technology. Fueled by technology, powerful forces are smashing this world. to hell, all in the name of this new religious dogma of disruption. Nothing is safe, not your home, not your job, not your family, not your community, nor is your future, not even reality itself, it seems, because most people don't believe that they are actually real. That's truly frightening. What scares me the most is how delusional our new overlords seem to be and the people who follow them. And even when it comes to things that they should know the best. You know, uploading. Popularized by that cyberpunk guru, William Gibson. In the 80s but dating back to the outer limits. And further back still is now the bedrock, the new commandments of the new techno-faith. Even though we're nowhere near pulling this off. And that's assuming you could program consciousness in the first place. A prospect for which no evidence yet exists other than watching people with their own programmed consciousness. How far away are we from uploading? Well, we're still working on mapping. Mapping, mind you, the brains of houseflies. The amount of computing power, raw energy it would take to program a single human persona staggers the imagination. In much the same way a trip through the vast reaches of space between stars does, ironically. But an extreme strand of materialism has affected the new robber barons with an overwhelming terror of death, which itself seems fueled by this new strain of an idea. They come out with things like the merge has begun and a merge is our best scenario. Any version without a merge will have conflict. We enslave the AI or it enslaves us. The full on crazy version of the merge is we get our brains uploaded into the cloud. 
So what's at stake in all of this? When nothing less than the face, the fate of consciousness in the universe, my brothers and sisters. We need to level up humans because our descendants will either conquer the galaxy or extinguish consciousness in the universe forever. This is what they say. My God, dude. <laughs> Where do you begin with this kind of narcissistic idea? Where is it coming from? Because we've barely begun to poke our noses outside of our solar system. We still have no way of actually testing certain methods. And yet, these people have unilaterally decided that consciousness exists nowhere else. Well, I'll tell you where this all comes from. It's coming from the closed island environment of TED Talk Talks. Exclusive Burning Man tents and Think Big festivals where overpaid pashas of valley genuflex before the newly minted religious dogma. Like this. Now according to the Sunday Times, Cox believes that any alien civilization is destined to wipe itself out shortly after it evolves. One solution to the Fermi paradox is that it's not possible to run a world that has the power to destroy itself and that needs a global collective or global collaboration and solutions to prevent that. That it can't be done. The psychiatrist explain that advances in science and technology would rapidly outstrip the development of institutions capable of keeping them under control, leading to civilization self-destruction. It may be the growth of science and engineering inevitably that it outstrips the development of political expertise leading to disaster. We could approach that position. Cox's comments come ahead of the publication of his new book, Universal, A Guide to the Cosmos, written with his colleague, Manchester University's physicist, Jeff Forshaw. The pair suggest that politicians should start thinking like scientists by grounding their views and evidence in order to tackle global challenges like climate change. And yes, it's friggin' happening. Now, can someone please inform Mr. Cox that astronomers barely understand our own friggin' solar system, let alone the universe? How these people speak with such authority about planets trillions of miles away would they have yet to determine what's floating around the outside orbit of Pluto. This isn't science. This is dorm room navel gazing. What Cox is in fact doing here is sucking up to the Archon class, providing them with the extra, extra, te, what, what's that word? A justification, anyway. A new paradigm. For unilaterally breaking down our entire social economic system, replacing it with an iron fisted feudalism, in which there is no middle class, a long thorn in the side of the oligarchs ruled by fiat to completely ignore all of our native ideas that we not only can live peacefully but did for thousands of years. Because if we don't fight climate change there goes the entire universe. My God. What is it that Sam Critz wrote again? 
and something Luciferian persists in the techno-gnosis of San Francisco. They have decided that our universe is a conscious creation of a higher power, and now they're massing their armies to storm the gates of heaven and go to war with God. Like Goethe's Mephistopheles, their doctrine is omnicidal. All that persists deserves to perish. Here's where we find ourselves back in Lucifer's technologies territories that I've told you about. And in fact, all the strange new technologies say that we suddenly found one sultry summer morning in the Mexican, well, New Mexican desert was in fact a Trojan horse leading us or lending us the bricks and the mortar to build ourselves an entirely new kind of prison for the human race. What did we find? The land of enchantment. Bell Labs. Spirit of communication. The genius of electricity. This Lucifer archetype has been associated with knowledge and technology since antiquity. In a positive life, we have the Prometheus myth. Darker sense, Satan, tree of knowledge in the myth of the fall. Which side of this powerful archetype will triumph in the future? The events in Roswell, July 1947 did not happen in a vacuum. They occurred within one of the most extraordinary periods in human history, particularly from an esoteric point of view. They would spark a chain of events that would change the entire world. So much technology that we take for granted today emerged from America's telephone and telegraphs Bell's Telephone Laboratories, or Bell Labs for short. Starting in 1947, with the Solid State Transistor, Bell Labs' army of top flight scientists and engineers took the world with a one game changing technology after another. And whether or not you believe that technology came from somewhere else, one thing is clear. Bell Labs, the Roswell event, and the links between them are drenched to the bone in occult symbolism. So much so that you can't help but wonder if both the skeptics and the believers haven't got this story all wrong. Because I think so. I really do. And as for Trojan Horse... We could call it Pandora's box, really. The thing that we opened, and once it's opened, it's too late to close it. Now, suppose we are living in a multi-dimensional time track with the same space, including young, a very young, primeval world, and our own, a much older world, with advanced technologies, all aging and developing side by side, conscious and sometimes stirred by the presence of others, strange ships in the sky, images of ancient cultures floating in the sky. An imprudent, imprudent at least, the antics of poltergeists and strange noises like creaking bed springs from an empty room. These time tracks spin around like separate grooves of a megaphone record, each playing a different score until the given sudden jolt when the needle jumps a track, imposing for a very short period an unintelligible time or tune upon its neighbor before being refer 
returned to its groove again. This is the time of the daemons of the air, and we've established the figure of Lucifer seems to be a demonization of several ancient gods and heroes, including the civilizing figures of Ones, Prometheus, Osiris, Dionysus, and more importantly, I guess, Cadmus. The term demonization itself is revealing since the ancient Greek concept of daemons was identical in most ways to the judo-christian concept of angels. They were guardian angels, spirits, in most times, not all of course, but the term daemon originally referred to a spirit that was a protector and the bringer of knowledge. The Romans called the daemons genie the root of the term genius that you've heard before. And you've probably heard if someone was particularly a gifted Roman, they would say she had a genius. Not that she was a genius. We are surrounded in myths that don't belong to us. They're lending us the bricks and mortars which to build ourselves a prison for the entire human race and I think it's been built. And oh, come on, you say? That's just a swivel-eyed tinfoil hat stuff? Low-grade? Conspiratorial? <laughs> Foolishness? Not even worth marking? Well, maybe so. But you have to wonder, what in the world, or what would a world in which humanity was trapped, quarantined, on a prison, in fact, look like? Maybe our spacecraft would be subject to constant monitoring and harassment. What's that sound, you say? That something as big is coming. There's being claimed that NASA is shutting down the ISS. That there's cover-ups and UFOs and all these things going around. And I say, yes, there are. Are they from another planet? I don't know. I think they're from us. And maybe our ambitious attempts to jailbreak Earth would be subject to a devastating act of sabotage and of course acts of sabotage because I am seeing far too many false flags now around 9 a.m. EST 604 ton rocket was being fueled with a concoction of liquid oxygen and rocket-grade kerosene propellant when the upper region burst into flames. An entire craft was engulfed in what seemed like seconds, including Facebook's $2 million communication satellite that was specifically designed to bring the Internet to Africa. And although Falcon 9's creators are baffled by the turn of events, a new theory has emerged that would provide answers. Since the explosion, YouTube videos have been surpassing or surfacing that highlight a mysterious anomaly passing over the Falcon 9 as it sits on the launch pad before, during, and after that explosion. YouTuber Graphics King posted footage a week or so ago and slowed down the video to reveal a black object flying over the rocket the moment it exploded. Now, does this smackdown, in fact, explain Musk's leak or leap into the murky waters of this techno 
Satanism? Is it in fact an escape from a more troubling reality? Why the desperate push for Mars? What is it even based on? And maybe we don't actually know, because either way, one thing remains true. All the money, the fame, and the power in the world only amplifies one's anxiety. More than sometimes, actually. Though it's certainly hard to muster much, well, any, sympathy for these new robber barons, given their unending broad-spectrum assault on our ways of life. We acknowledge that they may, in fact, be working on a more comprehensive data set than we are. And in fact, their anxieties are in fact well placed. Because pride goeth before the fall. And it certainly seems that this new earth side, small a, archon, seem to hold all the microchips right now, don't they? If history teaches us anything, it's a strange inversion of the darkest before the dawn notion when it comes to imperial power. Empires reach their zenith right before all comes crashing down. Spain, Portugal, Holland, Austria, Turkey. They were all the seats of mighty imperial projects not so very long ago. The British Empire was the long, largest colonizing force in human history just a past century ago. That holds the same for the true conglomerates as well as countries, for bankers as well as bloodlines. Similarly, the new archons of the valley might want to take a good look at the old car archons of the valley. Remember AOL? AOL, the undisputed overlords of the online world? In dial-up times? Remember AOL, Time Warner? How about space? How about Twitter? Remember Twitter? Oh yeah. It's on the verge, and no one wants to buy Twitter. What about Yahoo? Remember Yahoo? Good times. Pay heed, Valley Boys. Disruption isn't just a two-way street. It's a demolition derby. And I'm not telling them what they don't already know. I'd say that our new overlords are all too well aware of their shaky perch. Is up there on Olympus 2.0. If it takes less and less time for computing power to double, likewise it takes less and less time these days for corporate titans to fall right back down that hill. Like Sithipus and his stone. We can only hope they don't take the rest of the world down with them. because that's what it looks like. And why are we being shown the same thing over and over again? Why is Mars the final frontier? Because by now, you may have heard that the director of, this new sp of that space recruitment film, The Martian, was told of the discovery of liquid ice on the red planet while he was in pre-production for that film. And this is par for the course. NASA has a prevailing interest in Mars and has been using Hollywood over the years as a propaganda wing to drum up support for a major colonization push. See Mission to Mars and Red Planet and Total Recall and on and on and on. The sci-fi director Ridley Scott, 
the man behind Matt Damon's The Martian, wasn't surprised by NASA's recent findings of water on Mars. I bet he was not. Now, speaking to Yahoo Movies, the alien and Blade Runner veteran said that he knew about the discovery months ago, before anyone was told that when he first talked to NASA, we get into all kinds of stuff. And as I said, so I know you've you've got down there these massive glaciers. And the NASA representative said, yeah, the massive white stuff thing on the surface of Mars gets colored with dust. We think that's ice. And I said, wow, does that mean there's an ocean? Are we right now? What Mars was 750 million years ago and they went um, good question we want to go and find out those who followed the Enterprise mission and from back in the day weren't surprised by this announcement I'm sure a lot of us myself included already believed in the existence of water and that was common knowledge to most people who look it's hard to sort through all this nonsense that NASA pushes into the public and the fake stuff that's pushed into the public. But yet again, there's another topic in which Hogan and crew gets bragging rights for being way ahead of the curve. And from Newsweek, Richard Hoagland, co-author of the 2007 New York bestseller, Dark Mission, History of NASA, and a former NASA consultant reported in 2000 that his research team had found present-day water on Mars in the satellite imagery. It's pretty ambiguous, he said at the time, but we can see a crack in a crater wall where liquid started to flow from and follow a clear flow path down the slope of the crater mount. The flow patch is dark and it's wet, indicating it may have been only hours old when it was photographed. Hoagland and his colleagues have been reviewing NASA's newly announced findings. They're dripping the information out to us very slowly. I wonder how fast things will go or can go. The water announcement got an enormous amount of pre-show hype, of course, leading me to wonder if they are going to announce something that was, in fact, news. But as it stands, all we get is those agonizingly slow releases of already established information leading me to wonder if NASA is trying to bore the general public to death well whatever <laughs> it's going is going on down there whether it's chaos war economic upheaval there are those with the money and the clout to make a Mars mission happen one of these is this PayPal billionaire turned 21st century Howard Hughes Elon Musk He's been taking and talking up Mars to anyone who will listen. The only problem is Mars is no place to raise your kids. In fact, it's cold as hell. But Musk plans to change that. So Musk, proponent of traveling to Mars, noted that the red planet is currently a fixer-upper his words. But it can't be habitable for humans. First, you're going to have to live in a transparent dome. Eventually, you can transform Mars into something Earth-like. 
Apparently you have to land on Mars, though, to do that, and that's not looking too good. Anyway, been there, done that. But this may finally be the economic chaos, the social disorder on this planet that determines the fate of the Mars mission. We'll see what happens in Canada and the United States. Because America, let's face it, is our bad boyfriend of the planet right now. Military arm. He's brutal. He's not very nice. And I don't mean Americans. Although Americans are still volunteering to fight these wars for their freedom. Now despite what some may lead you to believe, the super rich are not invulnerable. In fact, they're getting increasingly nervous in the face of the economic chaos that they unleashed in their quest for fiscal godhood. They're always taken down. They are not superhuman. We always join together and kick their butts. And many of them are buying large versions of panic rooms in quarters of New Zealand in remote areas. And even some are even mewling escape into orbit happening when or if the shit truly hits the fan which it will because when civilization collapses they go first now the mainstream is finally waking up to the future of the American dream do- downward mobility for all but the top 1% of households. Maybe 10. Now a recent Atlantic article flashed out the zeitgeist with the survey data suggesting that the great middle class nouveau riche is also working up to a future of downward mobility. The downsizing of the American dream is in progress not going to happen, that might happen, already is happening. People used to blame or at least believe that they would someday move up in the world. Now they're more concerned with holding on to what they have. Reality is the middle class has been reached or reduced to the silver lining just below the top 5%. If we use standards, the populace in the 60s as a baseline. The downward mobility isn't just financial. It's a decline in political power. Control of one's work. Income producing assets. Think tanks and the NGOs have unleashed all of the divide and rule tactics used to keep people constantly fighting one another amongst ideas, religious, racial, ethnic, gender, etc. lines. Identify politics, political correctness, etc. But the 0.1% know all too well that one of these days some charismatic Spartacus figure will rise up from the mob and unite all the bickering identity groups against them. It is the prerogative of history. Hence, escape. The escape hatches. But some elitists are looking for another solution. People who brought into utopia variety of futurism are all wondering what the hell happened spend a lot of time looking for escape boats he did it they did it those people did it it's the men it's the women it's the christians it's the muslims it's it's you know my left foot sociologists will place the blame on the shoulders of the great stagnation the inevitable return to the mean period after 
there's a technology-driven hyper-growth. Moderns take technological growth for granted. But the plain fact is that most human, human history was essentially stagnant. 1776 AD wasn't all that fired different technologies wise. The BC and AD aren't that different. In fact, a lot of people would argue it was considerably less advanced in certain quarters. Philosophers would, well, throughout the en Enlightenment, pinned or pined for the comfort and the splendor of Rome, forgetting that it was unknowable for all but a very select few. Tyler Cohen is the guy who's been out front on this great stagnation business. And in his view, it's responsible for this stagnation in real wages for the middle class in America since the 70s. But since we're truly under the same economic system, no matter what it's called, no matter where you live, know that I mean everybody. That the main thesis is that economic growth has slowed. And in advanced economies, more generally, as a result of falling rates of innovation, this happens. Chapter 1, Cohen describes three major forms of low-hanging fruit. The ease of cultivating free and unused land, rapid invention from 1880 to 1940, which capitalized on scientific breakthroughs of the 18th and 19th century, and the large returns from sending intelligent, uneducated children to school and university. There are potentially two further minor forms, cheap fossil fuels, strength of American belief in their completely flawed constitution. Sorry, kids. He concludes, you would say that the modern United States was built at five forms of the lower hanging fruit. And most, only two of these are still with us. Fair enough. Yeah, you can't steal any more Indian land. <laughs> yeah, they're going for the last final rape of the resources here. I see that. And the natives who could actually help us are now 3% of the entire population on this entire continent. 3%. They used to be 100%. That's how bad it is. And while most of these produce extremely large returns, future advances will slow to a stop. There are those who take the great stagnation even further, declaring that we are all in fact at the end of an age of all scientific breakthroughs. That we are seeing so much fraud and so much phony science hype exactly because science has hit a wall and no longer has any showstoppers up its sleeve any rabbits left in the hat and this is the secret fear that Hogan pursues throughout his remarkable book had the big questions all been answered has all the knowledge worth pursuing been become known? Will there be a final theory of everything that signals the end? Is the age of great discoveries behind us? Is science today reduced to mere puzzle solving, adding details to existing theories? Scientists have always set themselves apart from other scholars in the belief that they do not construct the truth. 
they discover it, but the true scientists have been made to shut up. We will never hear their work. Their work is not interpretation, but simple revelation. For it exists in their own universe. The science itself imposes limits on its own power. Hogan makes clear, perhaps the greatest threat to science may come from losing its own special place in the hierarchy of disciplines, being reduced to something more akin to literal criticism and more and more theoretical and more and more repeating someone's old work which a lot of what we have is the repeat of old work it could all be that that wild quantum stuff that was the hippies out of Stanford brought into the mainstream was in fact false we've seen little in the way of practical applications with it and so far in fact, so more hard-headed science types dismiss it's all woo-woo. We saw the huge Higgs boson thing out of CERN. But I'm not alone in nursing serious doubts over that alleged discovery, saying that they've done nothing, that it's the YouTubers that are playing them up that they're actually doing nothing and I may not understand the science but I know BS when I see it and those cats have been acting like everything but a bunch of scientists who discovered the secret to all existence they seem to want us to forget the whole thing ever happened and they did some backpedaling a couple months ago scientific fraud isn't just for sophomores anymore it's gone mainstream. Thank you, everybody. Please join me next Tuesday. Love you guys. Bye for now.